Have you ever stopped and traced any of your life's events to where you are today? In retrospect, you can often see how even the disjointed, confusing, frustrating, seemingly unimportant experiences that you've had actually played a vital role in getting you where you are now, and perhaps also in preparing you for where you most want to go next. I'm Diane Bolden, executive coach and author of The Pinocchio Principle, Becoming a Real Leader. Like many kids growing up, I always wanted to be older than I actually was. And for whatever reason, I envisioned this idea of growing up and going to work as a golden opportunity, full of possibility and potential. The place where you could take all the things you learned and all your training and all your experience and apply it to something amazing, something gratifying and fulfilling and potentially life-changing. And then I got my first job. <laughs> it was an internship through my high school. I actually quit the volleyball team to do it, much to the coach's dismay. She said, Diane, you have your entire life to work. Why on earth would you want to do that now? And I was a little put off by her enthusiasm, but I didn't let it dampen mine. I couldn't wait to start. My first experience, bright young thing, was in a law office. I'd get there around three o'clock every day. And the first thing I noticed was how tired people were and how many of them were just going through the motions, watching the clock, counting the hours till they could go home. So many of them were on the verge of burnout. I didn't even know what burnout was at that age, but I knew these people were desperately unhappy and it seemed endemic. It was everywhere. There was an older woman there who I loved. She was kooky and interesting. She wore colorful clothing and she said things no one else had the guts to say. And she had these big thick glasses that magnified her eyes. I always looked forward to seeing her and hearing her rant about whatever was on her mind. And one day when I was delivering the mail, I came by her desk and she was kind of slumped over her checkbook, crunching numbers, shaking her head. So I asked her with my usual, usual enthusiasm, how are you today? And she didn't even look up. She just sunk further down into her body and grunted. And then she said, just getting through the day, kid, just like everyone else here, just getting through the day, getting through the day so I could pay my bills, go home. And then we wake up and we do it all over again. It's what we do. Life is short, kid. Enjoy yours while you still have one. <laughs> and I was crushed. It was like a gut punch, one of those welcome to the world moments. My vision of what I wanted the work world to be had collided with this reality that just didn't match. And I didn't understand. I wanted her, I wanted all of them to live in the vision of the working world I had had before I started that job. But of course I didn't understand. I was 15 years old. I didn't even know what a checkbook was. Flash forward 20 years. I had a great job doing leadership development work that I really loved, but I worked really hard and I didn't know how to say no. And I just took more and more and more on. I was working multiple projects and it seemed there was no end in sight. I had a lot of balls in the air, both at work and at home. And I lived in constant fear that one of them would come crashing down. I toggled between desperately wanting to please everyone and secretly resenting them. I was in a state of perpetual motion and I didn't realize I was getting less and less effective, but I knew something had to give. I was at my wits end. The funny thing is that when I was an intern back in that law office, I was hit hard with the realization that people seem so dead in this arena where they spent the majority of their waking hours. And I knew I wanted to do something to help them break out of that but I was only seeing part of the picture back then. I was a passionate, pimply-faced, braces-wearing teenager who wanted to help people stress less and enjoy their work more. <laughs> and I couldn't help them or anyone in their situation until I had experienced what they were experiencing. But now, all these years later, I was in it. The overwhelm and the frustration, the anxiety, the stress, it was mine and I needed to find a way out of it. My crusade had become critical. It took on a whole new meaning. And it was about more than just me because I had finally felt what all those people in that law firm and anyone I wanted to help felt. And so as I learned to find my way out of that and apply it in my own life, 
as an executive coach and consultant, I was finally able to help others do it too. It's one of the things I love most about my practice. Life itself is the perfect classroom. I imagine it's what Rainer Maria Wilkie was referring to when he said, the future enters into us long before it happens to transform itself in us. Think back to the experiences in your own life that you never would have wished for. The things that pushed you to your edge, that tested your patience and your resolve, that melted you to your core until you found something within yourself that rose up and allowed you to face those challenges and find your way through. Maybe you're in it now, wondering why this is happening and how you'll find your way out. I'm here to tell you that you will and that you'll emerge stronger and wiser and more vital than ever, and that your experience, whatever it is, will prepare you to go on and do something amazing. Your life is a dream in the process of coming true. And it may be a dream you didn't even realize that you had that's coming to fruition in the best possible way. Embrace it. Give yourself to the adventure of it and the mystery of it. Because when all is said and done, it really is the ride of your life.